Many things have foreshadowed the promise of the crypto industry. This includes the gruesome, year-long bearish market that shows no signs of abating. And we also learn the hard way that Sam Bakeman fried will never be the next Warren Buffett. His failure has led to the death of BlockFi, an exchange that otherwise was thought to be independent. This video will explain the critical details about the unfortunate fall of FTX, SBF, and the demise of BlockFi, and what it means for the crypto market in general, the fall of the crypto king. Not too long ago, Sam Bakeman fried Freed was a well-respected billionaire who was more of a crypto celeb. There, he interacted with influential people like Tony Blair, Bill Clinton, and Tom Brady's wife, Giselle Bundchen, with too much fanfare from admirers and supporters alike. SPF was more of a talk show host, interviewing guests for his show at the FTX slash Salt Conference. Sure, no one could have perceived any sense of doom besides SBF himself. Those scenes were exciting, and Tom Brady and the other guests will wish they never got to interact with someone like SBF. Reports are that he's even deleted every video he had with SBF on his social media page as the SBF's public disgrace continues. However, the fall of FTX goes beyond just bruising Tom Brady's ego. It has quite a negative impact on the crypto market at large. How? The FTX crash affects the crypto industry. FTX used to play a significant role in the crypto market. Its native cryptocurrency, FTT, was used to back the operations of SBS hedge fund company Alameda. Once a viable utility coin, FTT is nothing more than a dying poo coin. Since the entire empire was built around the coin, the company has lost significant leverage over all its investments, and with it went away millions of dollars worth of investments belonging to others. A lot of people trusted the public figure that was SBF, and that may not necessarily be wrong if things hadn't gone awry. The crypto market structure often leaves users subservient to the founders of the respective crypto projects, turning them into some sort of idol. Besides, the fact that they pioneered a decentralized project means they could be better. Most projects rely on one individual or institution to function, which goes against the foundation of decentralization. This is the case with FTX and other fallen crypto leaders such as Terra's, Do Kwon, Alex Mashinsky, Celsius founder, and Su Zhu, who have headed the Three Arrows capital. What do they all have in common? People trust them with their funds. And they messed up. SBF went a bit too far from these other CEOs. He achieved celebrity status by putting himself on billboards, which was against the regular practice of most tech companies. When asked what caused the insolvency that destroyed FTX, he has lame excuses about how he miscalculated user margins and couldn't correctly estimate all of FTX's margins. We're left to wonder how it is that a company's CEO doesn't know his company's leverage. He also talked about how Alameda was not insolvent but was relatively illiquid, which is a fancy term for saying the company is okay. We just didn't have enough money to support the assets. That's absurd, by the way. Who deserves the blame? But there were probably a bunch of other people to blame for what had happened. SBF didn't just become famous. He had politicians and celebs promoting him. Then he found his way to magazine covers, and many notable crypto websites named him the founder of the year between 2020 and 2021. They may not have all known that FTX was a sham, and as a result, will not be liable for the eventual collapse. But they did damage in their own way by leading millions of other people to invest their money in FTX. Money which, if you're not a citizen of the United States, you'll never get back. At a point, we thought FTX's scandal would just be the end, but another central crypto platform has met a tragic end, with many investors left at a loss. Sure, there was a bit of entanglement between SBF and Binance's CZ, and this led to what was going to be a serious war of exchanges. Binance is by far the world's largest crypto exchange. The company had bought stakes in new exchanges or projects, and FTX was a beneficiary. Reports were that Binance was an early investor who bought equity in FTX in 2019. It was more of a situation with Binance supporting a significant competitor against itself. Two years later, FTX made off with cash generated from Binance's equity, and Binance owned about 580 million FTT coins. After SBF's companies bailed out BlockFi and Voyager, people called them 
Atlas, and Crypto's Savior. Be very skeptical of Crypto Saviors. We're a little fuzzy on the details, but Binance decided in 2021 to relinquish their equity in FTX because CZ felt Sam Bankman Fried was getting in bed with some US politicians and donating money to them. That was expected as Binance was dealing with regulatory agencies requesting that Binance have a headquarters that would ultimately make it a fully centralized platform. The argument in favor of CZ was that it did not need to play by any jurisdiction's policies. On the other hand, SBF was curbing the favor of senators in Congress and the likes of Maxine Waters to accrue favor for the crypto industry in terms of regulations. SBF was set up to take the monopoly of the crypto market going mainstream, with decentralized finance finally coming into the world of Wall Street and Washington. This left people thinking that CZ might have been holding a grudge as they revealed that they were pulling out of FTX. The reason was is that they wanted nothing to do with a company that went behind the back of others in the industry. I assumed this was a reference to the dance of SBF around U.S. politicians. Then the crisis hit, and SBF bent the knee in submission to CZ as he begged him to buy FTX when news of the insolvency went public. Binance initially announced that they would be going ahead with the purchase, but made a U-turn the next day after saying there were too many red flags in the deal and FTX was beyond help. Crypto's largest lending platform Form also suffers. The spiraling events have created a major distrust between people on decentralized platforms such as dApps. I mean, no one would be willing to invest in a platform like Uniswap given its many unknowns. If a project like FTX and BlockFi could crash, anything can crash. One major winner that arises from the ashes of this is Coinbase. Crypto users in the United States will probably only trust the US-based exchange. It's become a major marketing opportunity for them. The CEO of Coinbase has refuted some of SBF's weak claims and suggests that the reason for the illiquidity, which later led to the insolvency, was because SBF had been trading or using customer funds, which he stated Coinbase would never do. Coinbase is only some people's first choice, given that they're too compliant and it looks like a crypto Wall Street. BlockFi, a primary crypto lender, was forced to file for bankruptcy days after it embattled constant withdrawals from thousands of users right in the middle of FTX's bankruptcy filing. Oops. BlockFi's initial comments were that it required emergency funding to be protected against bankruptcy. It suspended user withdrawals and wants to completely restructure and get back on track. You asked if their reserves are down to zero. I hope not. They reported that they still have about $257 million that won't be enough to satisfy the 100,000 creditors that the company owes. The company has an imbalance with assets worth $1 billion and liabilities worth $10 billion. One of their creditors include a U.S.-based arm of FTX known as West Realm Shires, which owns a $275 million claim. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission has also bragging rights to about $30 million. BlockFi also owes $730 million in unsecured claims to Acura Trust Company, which they hired earlier in 2022. Others still need to be publicized. The actual cause of BlockFi's challenges is directly linked to the confusion with FTX. One of BlockFi's clients spilled out of their liquidity pool, leaving a massive void in the company's finances, and they had to seek funding to survive. FTX was able to grant them a line of credit to scale through their problems then. BlockFi was once valued at $3 billion in 2021, and they planned to go public after raising about $350 million and hoped to raise $500 million more to reach their $1 billion funding target. The first straw that broke the camel's back was that they had to deal with the lawsuit courtesy of the SEC and other state regulators who accused their high-yield crypto lending platforms of violating securities laws at the federal and state levels. This led them to register their BlockFi yield product with the Securities and Exchange Commission while paying about $100 million as a settlement fee. They may still have thrived if the decline in the crypto market had never happened. BlockFi first let go of the one-fifth of its workforce in June 2022 to cope with the pressure that was beginning to build up. BlockFi's real problems started to surface when the Three Arrows capital collapsed due to Terra's Luna chain catastrophe, a digital finance disaster. 
Zach Prince, BlockFi's CEO, announced the liquidation of a large client. Recent events have allowed us to put two and two together to see how the whole chain reaction occurred. BlockFi's loss of its initial client caused it to get involved with FTX in a $400 million credit facility, which meant the U.S.-based FTX conveniently acquired BlockFi. BlockFi's entanglement with FTX was what caused it to suspend user withdrawals as its assets are stuck on FTX while still owing the SEC and Akira more than $800 million. This seems like a debt they'll be unable to pay soon enough. Things can still get a lot messier if other creditors opt to retract their funds, which BlockFi will be unable to pay at the moment. The latest news on FTX. As it is, reports are saying that SBF will likely be required to testify as U.S. prosecutors look to find out more about the events surrounding the fall of FTX and see if at all anything can be salvaged. At the time of recording, SBF has been accused of moving millions of dollars during the bankruptcy. The funds were moved to an account in the Bahamas. Investigations are on, and the discovery of foul play will throw more dirt on SBF's image. However, SBF's continued public appearance seems to be making light of the situation. In one of his interviews, after the crash of FTT, the native token of FTX, SBF suggested the issuance of another token. In response, the FTT token spiked about 20 25% despite the current state of events. While things are not looking up for the crypto industry, this event is positive because it weeds out bad actors in the game. Many crypto projects will come out all the more robust, except BlockFi. Is BlockFi a bad actor? Maybe not. But SBF and his company, FTX, have not done BlockFi and its investors any favors. The fall of BlockFi has taken investor trust in the crypto market down a notch. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I really hope you learned something. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.